today. So we're going to do an intro to economic thinking today. So plagiarism is a form of cheating that's serious legal, ethical, and academic offenses. Plagiarism is defined as the close use of imitation or language and thoughts of another without attribution in order to represent them as one's own work. Examples of plagiarism include all the following. So basically copying other people's work, that's plagiarism, and not giving and not giving credit. So that's plagiarism. So make sure just to write things in your own words when you're doing work. So I recommend that. So write things in your own words. I'm going to talk about AI a bit. So I'll allow you to use 20% AI in your assignments, just because I'll allow you to use up 20% AI in your assignments, just because AI is a very important job skill. And uh, I want you to use it creatively. So you can use 20% AI in your assignments and 80%, the other 80% is non-AI. But uh, yeah, just um, stay stick with the twenty percent. If you go beyond the twenty percent, I'll I'll start deducting marks. But if you stay within twenty percent AI, you'll be fine. But it's I want you to be creative with it and test out your AI skills. So just just be creative, and uh, yeah, twenty percent AI is fine with me. Um. So yeah, I'm just letting you know about that, and then I can I can also see um how much AI you use based on turn it in detectors so make sure that you say if it's like if you're writing a thousand page report if you have 200 words that are generated by ai that's fine um if it's like a so just make sure you're it's 20 percent of your assignment stay within the 20 percent. yeah so if it's 200 so if it's a thousand words 200 words could be ai that's fine um yeah so main ways to avoid plagiarism, paraphrasing, putting the information in your own words. Note, when you paraphrase, you need to include an in-text citation at the end of the section. This tells the reader where you learn this information. Using direct quotes, you're using the exact words in the source. You put the words in quotation marks and you include an in-text citation at the end. So paraphrasing example, um, you can paraphrase this paragraph saying, the pandemic has impacted both producers and consumers. Producers have struggled with increasing government restrictions, which have made it more difficult for them to produce large amounts of products. Consumers have consumed less to, due to uncertainty in the market and society. So this is the in-text citation. So you, so in this case, they summarize it very well. Yeah. So I'll ask the class, can you summarize this or read this and then summarize it? If you can, if someone can put it in the chat, um, yeah, read it and then make it summarize it in your own words.
Well, this is mine. So I said, polar bears have been an indicator of climate change with melting of sea ice. There has been less polar bears in the sea ice and they've been moving inland. So that's, that's my summary. So yeah, you would have to read this and then just summarize in your own words. And then you'd still have to cite it. So in this case, even if you've summarized in your own words, you still have to cite it. So you have to you have to tell like who wrote it. So the it'd be uh, last name Fountain. So that's that's important here. So the economic way of thinking. So economics is social science. So positive or analytical economics, facts and direct observation. How to remember I am 100% positive, descriptive, things as they are in the present or the way they were in the past, conditional, forecast the future. If X happens, then Y will likely happen. Normative, policy, economics, value judgments according to criterion. How to remember what is normal. Norm to me is not norm to you. What should be the case? What should be done for poverty? So that's that's what the... So positive is like, Inflation was 3% last year. So it would be like a statistical statement. While normative is affordability is bad right now. So normative, you can't prove. It's just like kind of a statement about something. While positive, you can prove it with a stat. So that's, that's the difference here. I'll put this in the chat here for everyone. Well, that's the difference here. So economists like to use models here, equations and graphs that try to explain behavior in the real world. These can be highly useful. Organize your thinking, explain or predict behavior. Ceteris paribus or ceteris paribus is the Latin phrase meaning with other things the same or all other things being equal, held constant or other things being equal or all else being equal. So one of the things in economics is experimentation. So like um, double blind studies. So one thing changes and everything else stays the same. So can you think of an experiment where one thing can change and everything else stays constant? So, uh, for example, I participated in a study where I was uh, cycling. So I was I wasn't the researcher, but I was cycling. And I was given this supplement called BioSteel. It's given water. I was given a placebo, which I thought was BioSteel, but it wasn't. And I was given nothing, and the the whole thing was everything else was kept the same in the studies except for what I was given. So every all the conditions were the same. I didn't change a thing, except I was given biosteel once, I was given nothing once, I was given water once, and I was given a placebo once. And the difference was measured. And that is a ceteris paribus study. The ceteris paribus, you change one thing. So in that case, you change what I'm given. It's biosteel, it's given nothing. If it's placebo, if it's water. And then you measure the difference. So that's what ceteris paribus means. And that's very important for research because the problem, if I was, if I had to, if my diet changed, like I ate something different that day, or I cycled more than another, another one of the workouts for the study, that could affect the results. So you'd have to keep everything else the same, except for that one, the bio steel given or placebo given water or nothing given. So you have to just, 
for a study to work, you need to keep everything the same except for one change. So that's very important in research. If you end up going into research here, that's it's a very important uh, way to design a, an experiment. So there's no issue. So here, uh, there's some of the graphs that we're gonna look at over the course. So supply and demand, anything above the equilibrium here is a surplus, anything below is a shortage. We'll go through that deeper as the course goes on. A aggregate demand AD, if the aggregate demand curve moves right, it's uh, growth in the economy. Production possibilities curve, we'll learn more about this as the course goes on. Inside of the curve is recession. Here, that's a recession. And then outside of the curve is, um, is if the economy grows. So if, if the curve shifts to the right, the economy grew. So this would be economy grows if it goes to the right. And then, yeah, so there's a lot of other things here that we'll look at as the course goes on. This is, this here is the business cycle trough. Expansion is when the economy grows. Peak is when the economy peaks at the highest level. Contraction is when the economy shrinks. And then here's the um, measure of inequality. And it can show you how much inequality the economy faces. So we'll learn about all those as the course goes on. And yeah, we'll go through it as the course goes on. So economic assumptions, people are rational, we think things through and behave logically. People are self-interested and will attempt to maximize their own benefit, be that personal happiness or a company maximizing profit, et cetera. Thus, people respond to incentives in rational, most likely predictable ways. It's not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but by the regard for their own interests. So scarcity. So we have limited resources, such as land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, but we have to choose what we can get from them. So we have a limited amount of resources. We have unlimited wants, though. So. so we have to choose what we can do with those resources. So we have a limited amount of land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And we have to choose what we can spend it on in terms of food, clothing, shelter, security, comfort, medicine, jewelry, and many other things. Scarcity, we have unlimited needs slash wants, but limited resources. Waste not, want not. We cannot afford to waste resources. Therefore, we need to distinguish between effective and efficient use of resources. Effective, you successfully achieve the end goal. Efficient, you use the bare minimum of in achieving the end goal. So effective, input the right things, output, efficient. Um, so effective is when the output is the highest and efficient is when the costs are lowest. So dialysis machine. These machines are used for patients who have kidneys that don't work properly. Without dialysis, the patients will quickly die. They're expensive, costing about $100,000. Some patients can can get a kidney transplant, which means they don't need dialysis any longer. So this is an activity here. Um, a hospital in a town has one dialysis machine that can run for 30 hours per week. As the boss of the hospital, you must decide who gets the treatment. There are many patients who require treatment and need to give them below. So decide who, how you will allocate the 30 hours in order of preference and be prepared to back up your answer. So I'll put this in. Um, so you only have, you only have 30 hours per week here. So which patients, which patients would you choose to get the dialysis treatment here?
Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to send, I'm just going to post this here as an activity to do during the week. So if you have any ideas, it's a very tough decision, but economics has these types of decisions because we only have, we have scarce resources. So we have one dialysis machine that can run for 30 hours per week. So we have to choose what we can do with that. In economics, we have a lot of those situations. So in in this case, I'll actually put this as a discussion topic here. So this will be an optional optional discussion topic. So this will be part of this will be yeah, so um this could um be one over five percent um options. So this will be under discussion here. And uh, yeah, I'll take the best of best five discussion topics that you have. So due to scarcity, we must make choices. By choosing one course of action, you sacrifice another. Every time you make a choice, you incur an opportunity cost. So opportunity cost is the cost of what is lost from choosing one good or a course instead of another. What you sacrifice from making a decision. The next best alternative when making a choice. So can you think of some examples? So my example here is the opportunity cost of being in school is that during the time you're in school, you could be working. So you're missing out on that income you could be making by working. So that's the opportunity cost of being in school is the lost money from working during that period. Can you think of any other examples of opportunity costs? I want to say something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want to ask like opportunity cost. Like if we have a two or three options, we have to opt for one option, right? Sorry. And uh, opportunity opportunity cost means like we have two to three options, and we have to opt for one. Yes. 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 So I want to say that there are so many examples. Uh, there are so many examples we face in our daily day to day life. Like when when we went for the grocery, we have so many options. Like in fruits, like if we take example of apple, there are so many types of apple, and we have to select and opt for the one product. Like so, at that time we can say about that opportunity cost is like we have to leave other alternative options, and we have to opt for the only one. Yes, exactly. So it you're right. So that can be also a situation where you you choose to buy one food over over other options. So the so by buying so like by buying apples, you miss out on the benefits of um of eating let's say bananas right so uh, opportunity costs can also be the like the happiness you get from purchasing another type of food so it doesn't always have to be money it can be your enjoyment of taking another choice yeah yeah that that's a good example there. The um, you could buy one type of food and you're missing out on the benefits of another type of food. It's a big idea because of scarcity. There's always a trade off, always a cost. Nothing is free. No such thing as a free lunch. Someone is always paying. There was always an opportunity cost. You cannot have everything. You have to make some really tough decisions. Societies, groups, business individual people everyone has to make decisions growth versus environment future versus present so right now what we'll do is we're going to do an activity here to uh practice some of the start here so i'll i'll share this here and then we'll get back to the uh the powerpoint
So join and click on this link here. We have to start this now. Sorry. Oh, sorry, my mic was on mute. Uh, I want to say that uh, you will start this or we have to start this, please. Oh, I started. So I'm waiting for, I'll, I'll press start when, um, when more people come in. Okay. I'm just waiting a few more minutes. But this is not for grades. It's just for um. It's just a practice. Yeah. So don't worry. Don't worry how you do on this one. But wait a few more minutes if anyone else wants to join in. I am joining. Just give me a minute. Sure. Sure. I'll give uh like. I'll get started. Anyone can still join in, even, even if you're late, don't worry. So, which is the correct definition of GDP? So it's the dollar value of all final goods and services produced within the country's borders in a given year. True or false, this is the correct formula for GDP. So this is true. So I is investment, C is consumption, G is government spending, and X and is uh, exports in net exports. So I'll write this down. So GDP equals I plus C plus G plus XN. I is investment, C is consumption, G is government spending, XN is export net exports. So, which of the following is not a type of GDP?
So inflation is not a type of GDP. Um, real GDP. So real GDP is GDP that takes out price level. Nominal GDP includes price level. Real GDP can be used to compare across years because prices are taking out. So which of the following phase of the business cycle means that the start of decline shown by a decline in GDP? The contraction, the contraction means the same as recession. So contraction and recession are the same. Contraction slash recession is when the GDP goes down, economy trips. So which of the following is not one of the factors affecting growth? We'll actually skip this one because it's actually a wrong question. So let's skip this. Don't worry about this one. This one, uh, this this question has wrong answers. So which type of unemployment means that there are not enough jobs for everyone? So be cyclical because in cyclical unemployment, that's a recession unemployment. So cyclical unemployment is recessionary unemployment. Cyclical unemployment is recessionary recession unemployment. So the economy shrinks and there are less jobs. So true or false, definition of inflation is general decrease in prices and increase in value of money. False. So it's the other way around. So what is a budget deficit?
expenditures exceed revenue. Which fiscal policy means policies that try to decrease output? The Federal Reserve has how many districts? Yes, good job. Eric Carmella, Dromacos.com, and nine eight one six six nine. I'll name off everyone off here. Great job. So the Action Work, Ankush, June, Geozel, Queen C, Nez Hat, Jenna Lynn, Homestuck, May, Rommel, Hadase, uh, Vivalin, Rebecca, Viraj, Apple, Isha. Excellent work, everyone. So we got that done here. So let's get back to the PowerPoint here. So I'm going to share my screen. So the so the PPC production possibilities curve. We'll do more about this in future weeks, but I'll go do an overview right now. So to imagine an economy where only two goods exist, for example, computers and basketballs. In this economy, we're always using all our resources. It means that we're using all our resources to produce either computers or basketballs or a combination of the two. If we want to produce more of one good, we need to have to produce less of the other. This shows us opportunity costs. Presumes that a society develop, devotes all of its resources, land, labor, capital, et cetera, into the production of two goods. Clearly, society can and does produce an incredible amount. Here, if we simplify, usually you see a trade off between capital goods and consumer goods. Attempts to illustrate the trade off and thus opportunity costs between the production of these two goods. So, how many of good A and B are we producing in point X here? It'd be two, two of good A and A of good B. Yes, so Ankush got it. Good job, Ankush. And then for point Y, how much would we be producing?
Four for both? Yes, exactly. It's excellent. Yes, four. For, excellent. Great job. That's true. Yes. Good job. So that's 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 exactly how to read the graph. Yeah. Excellent. So So in this case, the opportunity cost of increasing production of good A from zero to one units is a loss of two units of good B. I'll show you why. So here it would be, you'd find it like this. So like in this case, good A goes from zero to one. And then good B goes from 12 to 10. So you would uh, lose two units of good B. So what would be the cost of increasing production of good A from five to six units? So based on that, if it went from five to six here, what would happen to good B? Yes, yes. So go from two to zero. Yeah. So it's not always like that. It's usually it's usually concave. So it usually looks like that, looks like this, not like a line. So the the trade-off changes over time. So they're produced in different ways. So good B and good A are not produced the same. So let's say basketballs and computers are not produced the same. That's why the curve is, the, there's a curve. So this is basketballs and this is computers. They're not produced the same. So there would be a trade-off from what they're, what they're um, produced at. So in that case, Whenever society, in order to get greater amounts of one product, sacrifices an ever increasing amount of other products. That's a uh, law of increasing uh, relative cost, diminishing returns. D diminishing returns in general, output increases, there's an increasing return, the diminishing return, the negative return. So let's take an example of a pizza restaurant. Um, you, you can increase product of pizza over time until a certain point that just decreases. Why do economists believe it's increasing and not constant? All resources are not created equally. They're not equally able to produce both types of goods. People have differing abilities, take time to train, have their own motivation to work producing certain things. Different types of geography and climate means that some things are easier to grow in some areas. We can only change our environment to suit our needs so much. Capital machines, hypothetical, we could melt all the metal and switch machines into making something new, but this would obviously take time. Some machines would even work for both goods. Example, a machine that makes screws. So anything with inside of the graph or on the line is attainable. So we can produce anything on the graph's line or below the graph. That's, that's 